Hey, how many of these do you have on your farm? You couldn't run that farm, those fans, those augers, without a motor. But we've always got issues with motors. Today we're going to talk about some things that can help in running your motors. <laughs> Okay, I'm here today with a longtime friend, Hal Still. We actually go back to college days, and that's another video that we will never do. But anyway, uh, Hal and I go way back. Hal is actually a second generation ag contractor. So, Hal, you've put together quite a few motors and some electric stuff in the past. So we just want to talk a little bit today about what are some things that maybe farmers have a problem with in dealing with electric. Maybe they shouldn't be dealing with, or maybe they should, but what are some things that you see some of the problems that people have? Well, the biggest problems we see when we're trying to help a farmer with a, with a drive or a motor or, or something like a dryer like yeah. this is determining their power supply. Okay. You know, are, are we single phase power? Are we three phase power? A lot of farmers don't understand the difference between the two. Right. So consequently, we ask a lot of questions to try to extrapolate what they may have on the farm. Single phase power, typically we get locked into a position where we can't go any higher than 15 horse motor. Mm -hmm. A dryer like this, we can't sell to a farmer. Right. Uh, the next biggest problem we have is in a complex wiring situa situation like this, this takes a licensed industrial electrician to wire this unit up. The control panels, the circuitry, this comes pre-wired from yeah. the factory. The problem we have is there are switches, controls, other ancillary devices that come back to this panel yeah. where we've got the control power or the control voltage, but it has to be tied in. Your average residential electrician can't do it. Well, let me ask you this too. I'll bet you that if you start messing with that, you can affect warranties and stuff too. It'll avoid the warranty completely. Yeah, so it's almost in your best interest to pay to have it done right. That's right. Trying to mess with it. Right. Well, cool. Are there any things that kind of like you can do some maintenance on? Okay, so like you got a generator, you can check the oil and sure. keep it running, but like for a motor, I mean, keeping it out of, or even this, keeping it sealed, caulk some leaks? Of course, most of the motors in this type of equipment are totally enclosed, fan-cooled motor. They're designed for weather, all-weather service, but they're also designed to be greased. They need to be serviced. Okay. And grease is important. You don't use too much. One shot is enough, depending on the horsepower. Okay. So I'm not an electrician. I would have never thought to grease a motor. So, like, is that, I mean, are there certain horsepowers that required, or is there, you'll see a grease fitting if you know it? Or you'll, see a gre you'll see a grease fitting, and based on the horsepower, determines how much grease that motor gets. Uh -huh. Okay. And that'll be in the manuals on the equipment. All this equipment we sell comes with manuals, and it tells you that. Yeah. The problem we see, nobody likes to read a manual. Yeah. Or keep up with it. That's either. right. That's right. So we do it. We do some videos sometimes, like on taxes, and you know you got to keep your receipts and keep them in a place. But right. it's, you got to need a place for your manual. Right. Stuff Even too. here, if you take a look at this dryer, the stack of manuals that comes with this. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. Nobody wants to read that. So consequently, when something like this goes in, we do on-site startup and service to train an individual or a farmer how to use it. Right. So what you're also saying is you can save yourself some money by doing a little reading and right. knowing what to prevent and stuff like that. Well, cool. So what, what are we looking at here? I know most of our, some of our commercial growers will maybe, they also do some crop farming stuff. So what, what is this actually? Just kind of a side note, what are we looking at? This is a continuous flow grain dryer manufactured by GSI. This will handle uh, a corn crop coming out of the field at high moisture and dry anywhere from around 300 to 600 bushels an hour. Wow. Continuous flow. Okay. Which may end up, for some corn, might end up in some chicken feed. Most all of our corn down here in the southeast is going to chicken feed mills. That's exactly right. That's, crazy. Cool. That's cool. right. You have some organics and some other things, but most of it is going to the chicken industry. So, Hal feeds the chickens that feed the world. So, anyway, so Hal's with we, Southern. We, we condition 
the crops. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right, that's okay. right. Okay, we don't yeah. grow the crops, <laughs> we condition the crop, yes. we help get it stored, and then we help get it shipped out to the Yeah, land. very cool. Yeah. Well, thanks, Hal, for being with us. I Thank appreciate you, man. it. Good to see Hal's you. with Southern Agcom down in Blakely, Georgia, but they service all over, all over the place. Southeast. Southeast. Anyway, southeast. And um, anyway, so thanks again for being with us, Hal. And um, Thank you. read those manuals and take care of those motors.